Welcome back to another episode of the Home Turf Podcast. This is episode 36, Big 3-6. And we're one, we're one person short today. Emily is not here. She is absent. I don't know why. Why is she absent? Godspeed. I, uh, maybe because it's the middle of the day we're, and we're filming on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, that is true. This is new. In the past two weeks, we've been filming on Thursdays. We're filming on Wednesday today because, you know, Easter weekend's coming up. Everyone's going to be busy this weekend. I'm going to a casino. I don't know what what y'all's plans this weekend. Nah, I'm I'm Besides I'm leaving up. The Lord, the right, Lord, right, so right. Weekend. For sure, I'm leaving up for Dallas tomorrow. Really? Yeah, just going back home and then. But yeah, Jill, that's that's Jill pretty much it. Family. I'm staying here. Family doesn't really do much for Easter after I don't know. I've got older, so. Yeah. You don't I'm get just, Easter presents. Uh no, I've heard people like have that, and I'm, that has always kind of baffled me that like they really? get presents for Easter. I'm like, no, I, I never got candy and a shirt. Well, no, like candy what? I get, but like I've seen some people that like, get like Christmas presents, yeah. but like for Easter, I'm like, Wait, really? that's like they unwrap it. Well, like they like get a gift, like an actual gift, like <clears throat> a, like, a, like an air fryer. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I mean I get an Easter basket and I get candy and gift cards. Do you? Yeah. Yo, y'all don't yeah. set up like Easter baskets. And no, that's what I get. And they yeah, come in and no, drop yeah. All the eggs and yeah, stuff. I get like like a gift card and like a, a but, shirt. Well, it's kind it's kind of yeah. sucks because like I get the same stuff for like Christmas. I get candy, gift cards, and then I get like a new pair of jeans. I got a new pair of jeans this past Christmas. Nice. Yeah, so I kind of get the same thing minus the jeans. I got my nice. um, I got my first in print uh bat article frame for Christmas. Really? Yeah. Which what was your first article? It was the uh, around the SEC one of the uh, one of those. Oh, it's hey, that's gonna be worth a lot of money. Oh yeah, man. I need to sign it. You need you need to sign it, <laughs> and then when you get rich and famous and all of that, don't forget. Uh, I feel like Hunter's just how we gotta forget about me and you. He would forget when about he gets us. famous. Dude, I have I am very selective <laughs> with my friends, so that I'm quite the opposite actually. Are are we friends? No, I despise you actually. So I have to ask him every week. Like, <laughs> every week, every <laughs> week, I just think like. And I told him you have to, you have to figure out my style. Like if I didn't care about you, you would know I didn't care yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah, no, I would. I'm not, I'm not a fake person where I'd be like, hey, Grant, hey. Yeah. <laughs> like I, it would be quite obvious I do not care about you. Well, so I'm glad, I'm I glad do. you care about me. I'm glad you do. I'm glad well, you know that. And that's something else that I care about, truthfully, sports, more specifically. Wait, Aggie you care sports. about sports in the podcast? I do. I, I mean, I could talk sports. And the like, award-winning I podcast? Just, like, don't care. The award-winning podcast. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> There's a common theme with these podcasts. Ever since before y'all got on, every time that I talk trash on a team, <laughs> they do good immediately the next week. Like basketball, for example. Yeah. Talking trash on Anderson Garcia earlier in the year, and then he goes off and has a remarkable season. The, Who was this past it? Pro- uh, Jacob Toppin. Jacob Toppin. Oh, no, yeah, on his case. Yeah, doesn't even apply to just, A&M teams. I just, yeah, even other sports, other players, like Jacob Toppin, I just after he trashed on him to the Kentucky sports editor. Yeah, and, and, then he, and, <laughs> and then he goes off on A&M goes awesome. the weekend. And, yeah, yeah. The, the Kentucky finally starts heating up during the rest of the season. <laughs> So, I don't know if that's bad luck, good luck, whatever. However, it happened again with a and baseball. However, I'm not going to take the blame this time. I wanted to blame Emily, but she's not here. And y'all. And you know what? I'm, <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to take heat. Cause, so, okay, we'll go, we, we won't get to what we're to the, to the elephant till the end. Yeah. So, I mean, and I just want to say about the Ole Miss series, it shook out almost exactly like how I said it would shake out. Yeah, like didn't you say a lot of hits? I lot said of I said the bats can win, but the pitching is going to have to step up and do enough to suffice. Mm-hmm. The best pitching day was Sunday for sure. I mean, they only gave four runs. Mm-hmm. Um, truthfully, Friday as well. They gave a two run shot. Like I think it was in like the ninth or like I don't know. It was garbage time. Yeah, it was like scoring a touchdown with like down twenty with like three seconds left. Yeah. Um. So. It, it worked out like that. Pitching stepped up, got two out of three, and he had to walk it off Sunday. Um, you know, I was like, pitching did it's not. so funny who walked it off. Pitching though. did not dying. step it up on Saturday, No, though. Saturday. Saturday I mean, was I mean, atrocious we were, pitching. We covered that game. And, Together, and yeah. First thing, Slosh, before he even starts talking, he's just staring at the sheet and just goes. He looks so disappointed. Goes, 11 walks. <laughs> and we're like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, fun, fun little press conference here. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, no, it was so funny who walked it off Sunday because that's literally the guy that Emily was trashing at. Yeah. And I said, suck she's not here so we can clown her for it. However, she isn't here. But Ryan Targot took the walk off on Sunday. That was freaking awesome. Which is crazy. I mean, hey man, respect talking mess about him, and he managed to bump his ERA all the way up to one ninety eight. ERA. Sorry, batting average. Batting average. Yeah. Went Ooh. Up. I'm sorry. I I respect the walk off home run. I mean, that's, oh Hunter's going to continue. That's the he, Emily tradition of it's, talking it's trash. It's huge, on Ryan. but he is still the only guy in the starting lineup to not even be hitting two hundred. So other than that walk off, was it still kind of the same old same old? I mean, yeah. Didn't he have he had two hits he on had, Friday? Yeah, he had some, he, he hit better. This <clears throat> but I don't think he did anything. I think Saturday was not good for but him. But still, you still want to see like more consistency. Consistency, yeah. Like I, I would still, I would rather him, I would rather him be hitting like three hundred, two ninety, and not hit that hit that walk off because I think we win more games in general if he's hitting better. But you don't win that game. Yeah, which, but who knows that maybe if he's hitting better, maybe we don't need a walk off to win it. Yeah, maybe y'all won other games in other weekends. And it, exactly, so I, and again, respect. I mean, he won. He won the game Sunday. Like he won us that series. Mm-hmm. Like you know, huge props. But I would still like to see that batting average go up. I would like to right. see him swing for more for more RBI singles and you know like down the line doubles instead of just just trying to you know, hammer it 480 feet over right field, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, this, this are kind of players I like watching, you know, the ones that just want to kill the hell out of the ball and watch it fly. Yeah, dude, I'm that, a, dude, I'm a brewer. That's Rowdy Tella is just, no <laughs> show, dude. he hits like 150, but every couple of games he'll just send a nuke to. <laughs> so, hey, that's a big, we're talking about series from here on now that they need a win. Ole Miss was one of them that y'all talked about mm-hmm. and they won it. And then they went on against that I thought was a very talented Texas State team. Very talented. Almost had the them. almost had the wheels blown off it from the start though. Oh yeah. yeah. Where they get down five. Five nothing. nothing in the first, and then they responded with a five spot of their own in the bottom of the first. But still, which you hate seeing that from yeah. somebody you thought was going to be your number two starter. Yeah. Early in the right season. Right now it's it's pitching, it's pitching by committee right now. Yeah. Who, who started? Troy Watson got the start. Troy Watson. Who and, started Sunday night? Um, Shane Sadow. That's what I thought it would be. Okay. Yeah. But Tuesday night was Which, Troy Watson. But Shane Sadow didn't look Yeah, I mean, it sounds like that good. good. He wasn't crazy great, no. But that's the thing. A&M just doesn't have a... It, does but not have at a, this point, you, you, you'll you get what you can get it's, it's from. Committee, which, just so, need outs right now. After I mean, last year, it was, it was kind of the same thing, truthfully. Like, you'd have one game where, like, maybe one of your stars would be doing really good. But for the most part, last year was pitching by committee. It was outscoring people more than it was holding someone to two runs and then winning three to two. It was a lot of, like, you know, ten to seven, nine to five, like, kind of just, like, we're going to we're gonna out-willpower you. But so, it... Since South Carolina, they were down, like, last year, they were down, like, was it, like, nine, ten? Yeah, something like that. And it came back eight, and, eight to one, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, it has made me feel, I mean, not good, but the fact that the offense did manage to actually score some runs the last four games were hopeful, because then that gets, maybe it can be like last year where they're making up for bad pitching. I would still just like to see good pitching. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, hey, in the end they won. That's, True. They're coming off. It's a two two game win streak. Last time we were talking, they're on a four game lose streak. So, how right? There's an upside. How they yeah, hey, let's let's look at the cup half full. They won three out of the last four. Yeah, this is true. Come on now. And I and I will say about going back to the bats thing. Even Schloss was like, I, I don't have answers for like. It, remember Saturday? It was like I don't have do answers. Say, do you say it again? Wait, what do you say? No, he, he well, said he, he said. Uh, I, don't have, I don't. I don't know what to say. The only he said I don't know what to say because he was exp- he was explaining about what went wrong, like eleven walks. And then they scored eight runs uh, with two outs. And then they also loaded the bases twice while already having two outs, like with walks. And he said, I don't know what to say about that. The only way to fix it is by recruiting new players. 
we can't do that this year. Yeah, he just said he said we, is by getting new players, just finding new players. Just yeah, just giving. So say just already giving up. Yeah, basically, just, just basically just said the only way to res- the only way to answer that is getting new players, and it was like Gosh. that was I in dude, my we mind. We need a slosh quote wall for like post game. In my mind, dude, my and like like in my mind, my like my jaw dropped, and then even after like Slosh is walking away, I turned to Kate. I'm like, did he just? Say <laughs> the only way to like, answer this is to get new players. We can kind of do what they did in the bench warm, which is go to Dominican, sign a grown <laughs> I am 12. I am 12 with 20 bucks. 20 I bucks? Mean, I mean, dude. He's got documentation. <laughs> got documentation. <laughs> I mean, at this point, man, we don't have a, we don't even, like, even last year, we had Polish coming out the bullpen. I mean, that's, I guess, Oshenbeck this year. Yeah, yeah I, I think Oshenbeck is playing that. Could play that polish he's got a, role. He's got our best ERA yeah, I know. I like two, two nine the problem two though. The, best ERA on the, team right the problem though is the starting pitching is just not what it was last year, and I don't know so if it can get to what it was last no, year. No, I would say that. I would say that. I mean, you. I mean, you just be honest, a pitcher. You can probably. You can maybe tell me I'm wrong. I feel like it's a lot easier for the bats to evolve over the like as the season goes on than the pitching itself. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like Agreed. some batters get in slumps, and, you know, pitchers do the same thing, but I feel like batters find ways to kind of overcome that. You know, they, they change their approach to the plate and something, but pitchers get – it's a huge mental game, so when it gets in your head, it gets in your head. Yeah. Well, one – I forgot what I was going to say, actually. Uh, however, I mean, like I said before, great, great series, great game. They're on the Auburn this weekend, but before we get on the Auburn, there's a couple of shout-outs I want to give real quick. Uh, for starters, two Aggies, one as a coach, one as a student, is being rewarded, you know, per se. Uh, after Sam Bennett, the golfer, he won the U.S. Amateur Championship, and with that, you get to play among the professionals, among the best, on the biggest stage, the Masters. Mm-hmm. And that's this weekend, too. Basketball is over. And I was kind of sad because I was like, wow, what I'm going to watch now? Well, <laughs> I'll watch baseball, obviously, but usually I don't get into it until, like, the heat of things. You know, I'm one of mm-hmm. them guys. I'm, like, an average, kind of below average fan. Uh, other than, I mean, I watch the Strohs and all that. However, I do like the Masters. Uh, and that's going to be starting tomorrow, April 6th, on to Sunday, April 9th. It's a four-day event. And today they're having their practice rounds, and Sam Bennett almost hit a hole-in-one. Really? I didn't see that. that. Yeah. Did you see that, dude? It was yeah, like skirted her right past par it. three, and it rolled right past the hole and stopped. But really? it was sick. Nah, yeah. So he's on the biggest stage playing at the Masters this weekend. So what they start off on Thursday, they start off before, they start off in threes. You know, you play with the set the pairings, three group of guys, right. your pairings. He's playing with, so like one of the first playing pairings for the day is Tiger Woods, Victor Hovland, Xander, uh, I'm not. Maybe, Shoffley. Shoffley. That's one of the first pairs. So he gets to play with Max Homa and Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, they pair the uh, U.S. amateur uh, winner up with the guy who won the Masters the year before. Year before. That's cool. so. That's, really that's why. That's, he, that's why he's getting that to. Wild that's why he's getting to play with Scotty Scheffler, which is yeah. interesting when you think about See, it. I'm, Longhorn. Scotty Scheffler with A and M Sam Bennett. See, I'm, not, not even thinking I'm not about a golf that. guy, so I mean, this is all just yeah. Just imagine, like, I mean, him. He's you know trying to make his come up. He's trying to get into the pros, and he's getting experience from a guy like Scotty Scheffler, which I know he's a Texas guy. Dude. However, if you watch the new documentary I was telling you about, oh, I can, I need dude, to watch he's it. He's just man. such a nice guy. And I feel like, you know, he's really? paired up with a guy who's won the Masters last year, won a lot of championships. He's kind of – he's who's hot right now. He's, like, the hot guy right now. And uh, what you – you call him hot? Uh, no, I was just like, <laughs> was thinking – I think we should follow this format in other sports. I think whoever wins, uh, like, the March Madness should play the NBA Finals champion. It's not like they're going head-to-head, head, though. I know. It would be funny, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, he's going to – and I'm sure, like – Sam Bennett is probably not going to come close to winning this, the Masters. I don't know right. when the last time a U.S. amateur champion has or if ever has won. I would be surprised if they ever have ever won have. It. So he's going to be sitting here getting experience from a guy who has played on the national stage, who's won the Masters, you know. It's a, it's a tough mental game. It's uh, one of the toughest mental games other than, I think, probably baseball. Uh, 
in the pros, and he'll be getting a lot of experience from those guys. Max Home is pretty cool. He had an episode on full swing, but a lot of players playing in the Masters this weekend, so I'm probably going to yeah. just chill back and no, watch that. No amateur has ever won the Masters. No amateur has ever won the Masters. Um, someone was Frank Sh- Stranahan was tied for second in 1947, and um, Billy Joe Patton finished one stroke uh, away in 1954, so... Yeah, so no one ever. So, no, I, so I, will, I wouldn't expect putting your money on Sam Bitter. Yeah. However, it would be pretty cool to watch him live and watch him play. I'd like to see him make the cut at least. Yeah. That would oh, be yeah. awesome. Th- yeah, that would be pretty cool. So good luck to him. Someone else who's getting appreciated for all their hard work that they put in, uh, awesome resumes, Gary Blair. He's GB. Made the, he got inducted to the College Basketball Hall of Fame among, Smith. among some big names. And when is the actual inducted? induction of the hall of fame i don't know we'll figure that out but some of the guys that he's surrounded with is like paul gasol uh Dirk Derek Nowitzki, Nowitzki, tony parker greg popovich Dwayne, Dwayne wade. wade yeah and a few other names a lot of a star-studded list for sure oh yeah this is this is a stacked class yeah this is like movies. Now, this is the College Basketball Hall of Fame, correct? Or, no, this is just a This is the Naismith Basketball, Smith basketball this is the Hall baseball. of Fame. Yeah, this the is Naismith. Naismith. This is, just, this is just basketball. So, you don't even have to play in the pros to get into that Hall of Fame. No, this is just for the game of basketball in general. Oh, oh really? you know, obviously it's So, not... f- football doesn't do that. I don't think baseball. Like, so, like you say, you're a legendary baseball coach. Could you get into the Baseball Hall of Fame? E- I believe so, yes. Really? believe so I'm not I'm not too sure I mean the, one of the names that is on here that is inducted that is getting talked about because he's not there um is Jim Valvano oh, he's getting inducted he's, in, he's inducted class? this this class yeah Dude. which I saw that and that like just see the name in me tear up man every yeah. time I watch that um is it 30 for 30 mm-hmm. the the one you know, where he, the, the NC one, State the yeah, his 30 took, for 30 yeah they yeah. took down five slam and jamma and man Dude, it makes me tear up every time. Yeah, just... I try to watch that, and then I try to watch his speech once a year when they're doing the foundation. Dude, uh, it, it's so the man. the class the tournament at the beginning of every college basketball season. Uh, when they do that tournament, they usually show his talk. Like and like, if you're like me, if you're like Hunter, Cade, big college basketball guys, and that that talk just like, dude, yeah, it, it's a tear jerker for dude, sure. Every time, <laughs> it, it, is it, messes, sure. it messes me up. I can't. Oh, oh it's man. good. But hey, congrats to all those guys. Congrats to Gary Blair. Good luck to Sam Bennett. But honestly, congrats for even playing. The fact that he's even playing in the Masters right now is crazy, and I don't think it's talked about enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get into it, man. We yeah. usually start off with we usually end the podcast with some of Cade's hot takes, but. There's been one brewing in Hunter's bro. Yeah, I, Hunter got, came in here with uh, got, saying this is gonna be a, a good one, so got, we'll, we'll see. We'll I've see what, a, see what we got. Before I do that, transfer world update my new quasi segment that I'm throwing out there because I love Portal <laughs> Combat season because transfer portal is like free agency, but I don't have to worry about contracts. Yeah. So, um, Trayvon Mark uh, from from Houston, we're in his final four. He's speaking between us. Florida, Kansas State, and Arkansas, who Arkansas, I feel like, has like a sponsorship with the transfer portal, because <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone enter the portal and Arkansas is not the first name listed on there. Yeah. I feel like they offer everyone. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like it's always between Arkansas and someone else. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that'd be a huge pickup. Um, we've offered uh, us and... That's the first name I've seen that... Like him, he were talking about that a player has said he's shown interest in Texas A and M. Is there any other players that have we've Texas had a we, we've on had their a list? we've had a um, a Zoom interview with Tia Folly Lenard from Middle Tennessee State. I talked yeah. about a few podcasts yeah, yeah. back. Um, but I mean, at this point in the season, like like the Tyler Perry guy you talked about earlier, yeah. the well, Oral yeah, Roberts so that, guy. That's another thing. Uh, I'm I'm um, I. I remember. I'm pretty sure I saw it, but if not, I'm sure that we have offered Max Abemis. Abemis. Abe Smith. Ace. There's no the B is silent and it's like a C. Ape. And Ape plus, yeah, one. Max A. Smith. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't hurt that Julius Marble oh. was his high school teammate. Yeah. So that's that's what it, I Dallas saw the Jesuit. Go deep. Could, I didn't know the connection. If we, if we could get him to come here and he wouldn't play shooting guard. Because he had entered the portal last year and then we had kind of shown interest to him, and I think it came down between like A and M and Tech 
even along those lines, and then he decided to stay at Oral Roberts. But he's he's a stud. Dude, he's when he so when they made that so run good. in the tournament, he was yeah. a huge part of it. He was. Okay. I was so surprised. He like didn't, he the didn't, part of it, basically. I'm surprised he didn't do what O'Banner did. Yeah. Just transfer immediately. After. Him and I love him seeing, and O'Banner were. I love seeing the scores that we're talking, like that Tyler Perry guy Dude, you mentioned. If we could get that either, ace, if we get either of those guys, those are get, two guys that can take over a game and score, and that's the time. Those are the kind of players I want to be seeing. I was, I was joking some, uh, some people earlier. I was like, can you imagine if we got Max Apesmith uh, and and Tyler Perry and Wade Taylor on the bench. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, the, who would you guard? The horseman of the three apocalypse, dude. Just yeah. raining down. Three-headed. Right to start coming Three-headed like, dragon. Yeah, that would, n- not in a trillion years that that happened, but that would be so funny. Yeah. Uh, but if we got either of those guys, would be... How would you even rotate that many players no, with the wouldn't. players you got you right now? You wouldn't, because those guys are transferring to start. Yeah. And, and well, we've got a spot open. Uh, with Dennis leaving, and then even now Boots said he's he's making a decision. Yeah, Which, truthfully, I thought, on his Instagram. I, he's making a decision on his future. Like, yes, yeah. He, he's deciding if he is staying or going. Which honestly, I thought that it was. It's either staying or going to the draft. Yeah, which I mean, okay. he can go and like keep his eligibility, but like yeah. I, I thought, I don't know. In my opinion, I thought it was a pretty obvious choice to stay. I think he should stay if. I'm not even just being like uh, I want to see Boots like he here. he wouldn't get drafted. He'd have to sign like a deal, like a like a like, like a G League Q deal. Sign. He'd have yeah. to. I don't even think he could get a two way right no. now. Well, he didn't get a two way, but he could bed, play. Right? Well, but, but, well, it was kind of a two way. But Q is like Q is a Q is a baller, dude. He yeah. is. Yeah, but he is. But I'm not saying Boots isn't, but I don't think his game. Like I feel like Boots, if well. he left right now, he'd probably be playing overseas next year. Yeah, and and he's got NIL, he's got nil, so he could you know exactly nil. But, I mean, he's got people around him. Buzz is going to talk to him and make sure that he makes the decision that's best for him. And at the end of the day, you know, he did great things for A M. Whether he stays, whether he goes, I'd love to see yeah. him another year. Love. Do you think him he has play. something else to prove? That's that's yeah. Kind of winning what a, winning a game in March. Well, not even that. I'm not even talking about like for the school. I'm talking about does he have something to prove? Yeah, and I think, so you think he has a little more to give? Yeah, before I think he goes I think he level. can show. I think he can show people in the draft that he's a better shooter. First off, okay. I think I think he's a great driver, showing that he can drive from both sides, not yeah. just get forced one direction. Yeah. So um, we haven't we haven't seen the full max. I mean, of what I, Tower Tyrese Radford has. If to he give. feels like he's at like where he. Like doesn't won't get anything from college, then mm-hmm. then yeah, then then he should go. But I I think in terms of gameplay, that's going to translate to the draft. He's got things that he needs to work on, mm-hmm. um, and but I mean we oh man, I love the transfer portal. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's so much fun. fun. I feel like in the end we're not going to get that ace guy. I feel like we're not going to get that Tyler Perry guy. We're going to sign that Houston dude. The Houston guy's yep. going to come here, fill in Dexter Dennis's spot. Dude. And we're not gonna add a score, but that's just me thinking. If we got worst case scenario, I mean, I think I think we're gonna go hard at at, at one of those guys. I yeah. think it would, I think it would be Ace Miss. Truthfully, I think it's really gonna be like full for. I mean, with 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 him playing with Julius, I, I think it's gonna be just like all the chips. We have to get a Let we me... have to get a long guard that can defend and drive. We need to get a like a shooting guard. A shooting guard, like we talked, like you you talked about, a shooting guard mm-hmm. shoots. <laughs> yeah. Now, like we need a we need a guard that isn't going to catch and then like pump fake and drive, <laughs> go to the paint, pass it out. We need a shooting guard that's going to catch and shoot. Yeah. And so let me. I want to give make it. I want to give you a scenario <laughs> real quick. So, would you either? Won't. Tyrese Rafford stay. Mm. We get that Mark guy to come in and fill in for Dennis. And then we kind of have pretty much the same team going to the next season. Or would you rather Tyrese walk, we fill in two new guys, and the new guys is 6'5", scoring a shooter like you're saying. Uh, so you either keep Tyrese or get someone from the portal. Depends. I don't want – I wouldn't want a player that – because I think next year is win-now mode, truthfully. Yeah. I think next year is like everyone's coming back. We just got to get some pieces that will help us to win immediately, mm-hmm. and of course, get a few like pieces that like, you know, will give us a couple years so that way we're not leaving everyone out to dry after next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if it's someone who's proven, someone who is like, 
shown that they can win and win big before. I mean, I don't want. A- I mean, I don't want anyone on our roster, like especially that starting group, to leave or you know. But I mean, which situation not- would give you would help you win now? I mean, I think Boots can win now, but again, it just kind of depends on what player like a- like Ace Miss. Yeah. I mean, that guy is a generational scorer. Yeah. Like that guy is that guy is a ridiculous ball player. Yeah. I mean, I would love for him to be here, and then if that's the like, that's the case if he stayed, and then and then yeah. maybe like Ace Miss, but Ace Miss wouldn't come unless he's knowing he's got a guaranteed starting spot. Yeah. That's why we're not getting. That's why we don't have a shot with Cryer. Either. Ace Miss would have a guaranteed starting spot. Yeah, he would. He but that's why we're not. We don't have a shot with Cryer because Cryer said he wants to play point guard, and Wade's not losing that point guard spot. Yeah, no. And we have Bryce Lindsey coming in, who's who. Buzz has already said he wants him to be Wade's backup, so that way he has, yeah. like, development time. Yeah. So I think it's really, if Boots leaves, it opens up two guard spots. If he stays, we really only have the one open guard spot. Because um, I don't think any of the win-now guys are going to want to come off the bench. Yeah. Because that's what they're, they're win-now guys. Like, yeah. Cryer's not going to come off the bench. Perry's not going to come off the bench. I mean, those are the two situations. That's why I kind of asked you that, to see what yeah, you Yeah, I thought. mean, I... You don't, don't have know. to answer if it's too much. No, okay. it, we can it, really, it, is, your... it is really hard because I love Boots so much. Yeah. We've talked about it. Boots is one of my favorite players yeah. for, uh, to play for us. But You don't want to talk down on Boots. No, I don't. I just, wanna, I just want you to think. But I think that we have a lot of guards who drive and not enough guards who shoot. Yeah. I think we need a guard who can like just take over a game. In order to win now, we need a guy who can take over a game. And, and just shoot. And, just, and it can't just be Wade. Hunter, I agree with you a thousand percent. Awesome. Now, so we're, let's we don't, let's not we, answer that question. Let's, let's get into what on. you may not agree with, or you may. <laughs> let's see. So obviously UConn just absolutely continued their dominant tournament run and just smoked the entire field. Like everyone they played just. I hope this is a question that I think you're asking. Go they, on. They, they just, I mean, they they blitzed through. They they treated every everyone. There was no close game yeah. that they played. It was a dominant tournament performance. Mm-hmm. So, there has been argument that people wondering, people asking, is UConn a blue blood? Oh. That's not my take. UConn is a blue blood. Yeah. My take is UConn is more of a blue blood than Duke. So, okay. it depends on how you're looking at a blue blood. My is it how many people you send to the league? Is it how many conference championships? How many, you know, whatever. My thing is how many times do you win a national championship? Yeah. Because I feel like at the end of the day. Okay, so let's let's. I want to ask this first. I want to ask you because I kind of have like a right mindset of like what a tr- what a true definition of a blue blood is. I want to ask you. What do you think it takes to be a true blue blood? I think to win national championships and not just win for, them one time. I think national championships because I I think our dynasty so dynasty schools who can yeah. win national championships and, and even if they have a couple years in between they'll be back on the national stage. Yeah. And so the reason people say it's because is because UConn has made six Final Fours. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many national champions they have? Five. Five. They make it. They make it deep in March. They're going to win. Yeah, and they've shown they're going to do that. Now I said Duke. Duke has five titles as well. They've got seventeen Final Fours, which mm-hmm. discrepancy is like Duke can make it deep, but are they going to win? And I mean, yeah. five out of seventeen is pretty low margin, especially when you compare it to five out of six. Yeah. Now you're saying like, oh, they only made it six times. Yeah, but they've won five. And if you want to compare conference titles, they have 29 conference titles compared to Duke's 23. Yeah. And then if you want to compare to Kansas, Kansas has 64 conference titles, 16 Final Fours, and only four championships. It's like the fact that UConn isn't a, like, concrete blue blood is, like, baffling to me. Like, maybe maybe this question before, the you know, they won the other night, but I think now it's like, yeah, like... They're they're they are a blue blood, yeah. And and ab- above, like if if there has to be five, I think they're a blue blood above either Duke or Kansas. Yeah, this is a different sport, different scenario. I just want to ask you, is so you know what like a franchise team is? Yeah. Like uh, the Yankees, the 
Cowboys. Like a dynasty. Like a dynasty team. Yeah, like you would, win those. Yeah, yeah. Would like you the, ever consider the Warriors the, were a dynasty? Would you ever consider the Buffalo still Bills are a dynasty. to be like a franchise team? To be a buff, like, like a dynasty? Like a dynasty franchise? No. Team? Right now? Ever? No, I'm ever? not. No, I'm talking oh, about. Ever? They were. I'm talking about they like were a never. Blue blood of NFL. No, they were never a dynasty. I mean, the only time you can maybe say never? that is when they made those no. four Super Bowls, but then they lost. I. You didn't every win them. You didn't yeah, exactly. win them. And I think that again. People would like to throw all kinds of, and people are going to uh, put value to like what a blue blood would be yeah. um, for different ways. If it's players in the NFL, oh yeah, Kentucky easily. You know, yeah. like Kentucky's up there, Duke's up there. Yeah. If it's conference titles, then oh my gosh, yeah, UCLA's up there, Kansas is up there. Um, you know, but I think if you look at it at a microcosm, like what college basketball is and why you play college basketball, you the team suits up to play. To try to win a national championship. Yeah. That is the goal for every team. It's the top of the mountain. It's why you play college basketball. And UConn has has shown that they can do that. I mean, yeah. They've so, so like, a blue bow would be basically a team that before the season has a real chance in their thoughts to go in and win a national championship. Yeah, I think a blue blood is someone that you can bet on before the season every year, and it would be yeah. a pretty safe bet to say that they are. So a team like Kentucky. It. Yeah. A yeah. Team like Duke. I feel like that's more of Duke than it is UConn. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's. I feel like there's a lot of. Are you saying you feel like Duke is more of a blue blood? Yeah. That, that's so like if you. But my thinking is. That's yeah, my. I mean, no, opinion. but you take that scenario like you just said, and I'm thinking, okay, before the season, I would have thrown all my money on Duke because I think they have the tools. The equipment, the players, the coaching to get to a national championship, and that's when I think of a blue blood. I think of teams like that, Duke. I think of teams like that, Kentucky football. I think of Alabama. I think of those teams. You know, I would choose more Duke than UConn. However, UConn has proved to be a team, like you said, yeah. five out of six. I mean, and it's a recency thing. Like UConn had a stretch there where they weren't very good, and I mean, it happens. Kentucky and, and I mean North Carolina did the same thing, and no one's questioning that North Carolina is yeah. a blue blood. I mean, it happens. Yeah. Um, I feel like a blue blood would be a team also where wherever they go, anytime they lose, it's an upset. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like any time, anywhere Kentucky goes, that gym is packed. But even like even like Kentucky, you know? Kentucky's got fifty six conference titles, and they've uh, they've they've made the final four seventeen times and won eight times. They have fifty six conference titles. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, do they they were running the SEC for that's crazy years. Just like every year, it's just Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. How many Kentucky. conference titles does Duke have? Duke has they have a bunch 23, too. which is yeah. six less than UConn. It's six less than UConn? Yeah, but... Well, that was back when... So... What conference was U- has UConn been playing in? And hey, stuff? they were in Houston's conference. So that was probably when what? They were also playing with Wichita... They were in the AAC when Wichita State was good too. Those, that yeah. was when... Who, who was their coach for? Jim Calhoun was their coach mm-hmm. at UConn? I mean, how many... I get. Is blue bloods like like dynasties where it's like during a time period or once a blue blood always? Yeah, blue. like because if we're talking like that, then I don't know. I feel like we're there's got to be a difference between like dynasty and blue blood here. So like like blue blood within the past like ten years, then I'd probably say UConn over Duke. No, but say, like, like in like general, history. like I mean, I mean Duke won in twenty fifteen, twenty ten, and. Or like 2001 or something like that. So, it's that's not like, like they haven't won Blue recently. I so just because I'm like, I don't know, like, what do you but mean? But that's the thing, I don't think anyone knows either. I think we are, there are ones that we are like, have all a consensus agreed on. You know, UNC, UCLA, UCLA, even Kentucky, but then like, you know, Kansas is, yeah, why not Kansas? You know, Kansas is one of those teams every year. I'd say Kansas. You know, is people a people do say, but like, but even now, if you just look like from a title standpoint, they've got they have one less title than than UConn. I mean, and and they were they were at three till till last year. Yeah. So you know, it's like there's also a lot of recency bias into it because Kansas has been good a lot recently. Um, I, well, okay. Oh Actually, my goodness! So, I went and pulled up UConn's conference tournament <laughs> wins, and like they, like their conference championships, m- pretty much most of them have 
They they only won one in the American, uh, like their second most in the Big East. But most of them have come in when they were ba- in the Yankee Conference back in the forties and the fifties and the sixties. That's, that's and for like, the most in okay. Well, the Yankee Conference. UConn, come on now. <laughs> UConn, UConn's produced. I mean, they produce who? Kimba Walker. Kimba Walker. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. Just think, who's all the players Shabazz, they produce? Shabazz and Napier. Pro. Shabazz, yeah. I mean, he didn't really go off to the pros. Yeah, but he was fun to watch. Yeah, but like talking college, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Would you say Louisville? I'll put no. Historic. They used to be. I would say Louisville is not a blue blood. Maybe they used to be. Maybe, but not anymore. They're. Yeah. I don't know. That just, they're that just a. Blue they're blood, just a they big just name program them. now. I don't think confuse me, but it's just so hard to. I don't know. Like like you said earlier though, UCLA, UNC, oh, dude. Um, Duke, Kentucky, Ray Kansas, Allen. Ray Allen, yeah, yeah. Kemba Walker, Ben Gordon. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean a lot of I mean a lot of older guys, which again kind of speaks to like blue bloods. Like you know they've been around, they've been like hovering around for a long time. So, yeah. well, yeah, I, I I'm still. I don't think the hot take was that they're more blue blood than Duke, right? Not that yeah. they're a not that they're a blue blood no, in general. No, they are a blue blood. Well, yeah, I I would agree. Hundred percent. But right? yeah, I still don't think they're more of a blue blood than Duke. When you talk about Duke's players that they're, are in the NBA, like, well, that's what I'm saying. It's if it, it's if you care about like producing players for the NBA, yeah, so that make you a yeah. blue blood. Like every year, if you look at it, which teams are always on the top of recruiting. Duke is always up there. But yeah. even like, even like no. you know, Duke has like, Duke you're and not... Kentucky have both shown that like even having like the top recruits has kind of in today's basketball with like the transfer portal and things like that. Sometimes just getting the getting five five stars every year for your starting lineup doesn't work because you're going up against teams who are who are all like fifth year seniors that are gonna out hustle you. Have you seen uh Kentucky's recruiting class this year. Oh, it's nuts. Not. Dude, they have five players. The first four are in the ranks two, three, four, and then the number nine player, and then like number whatever. He's a four yeah, star. It's crazy. It's nuts. It's like might be the best. People were talking about how they're comparing that to the uh, Zion, the what? Oh my god, who's all on that squad? It was Zion, uh, RJ, RJ Barrett. Yeah, RJ Barrett. Uh, uh, Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish, all those cats, and like dude, which <laughs> they <laughs> still didn't win a championship. They, yeah, they, yeah. yeah <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. I mean, and we, that's we my all thing. Know... I think that like I think that to be a blue blood, you have to win national championships. Like North Carolina, like this year, you know, they just they 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 have such a high standard that it's just yeah. you know, and then even there was talk about is Villanova a blue blood? Yeah, it's Villanova. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the one thing they all have in common here is they are all blue. They are. And so I think that has to be the number one criteria to being a blue blood. Yeah. It's that I, you have to be blue. I think <laughs> someone needs to come out with the true definition of blue blood, and I think they need to well, make see it what... like... I've looked it up before. I've tried. I can't. I could never find like a true definition of what it is to be a blue blood. What it takes. What's the criteria? You know? Oh, I okay. feel like blue blood, like you said, should be switch situational like should be on a timeline like how i was talking about just because the buffalo bills didn't win a national championship they still won four conference championships in a year span so the so this is what it says this is um it doesn't even give a definition for blue blood it just tells you who the blue blood schools are yeah it says says college basketball isn't dominated by a group of select universities that are often referred to as blue bloods this is duke kentucky kansas north carolina and ucla how? So they don't. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like I don't know. They just that that whole talk confuses me. And uh, let's go on to the next topic because my boy has to go to work. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, another hot topic going around right now recently is one individual, Angel Angel Reese. She's a woman basketball player for LSU. LSU is coming off a national championship win against Iowa, taking down the giant. Caitlin Clark, and supposedly, I mean, they won, but there's been a lot of heat on Angel Reese recently for what she did after they won. Not during the game, but after she looked up at the scoreboard, saw what the score was, and then decided to do this. D- 
did it. And even after the game, after they won, you could say that Kaylin Clark still won at the day, at the end of the day, because she was living rent free, rent free in these people's domes. That's my opinion, but I want to see y'all's thoughts on this whole situation. I, I, I actually liked it at, a lot at first when I was like, because I, I didn't get a chance to watch the game because I, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know what I was doing during the game, but anyways, I didn't watch it, but um. I saw after the fact uh, all the videos on Twitter of her doing what she was doing. I thought it was kind of cool. That was funny or whatever. Like yeah. it was just back and forth trash talk. Yeah. And then it was. I also saw that the fact that Caitlyn Clark did the same thing. And I'm yeah. like, but and then you go back it. and watch it, and she was like doing it for a while, and I was kind yeah. of like, okay, that's kind of well, over yeah, the yeah. line. But like then again, it's really not that big of a deal, and it's yeah. kind of funny. No, I mean, okay, cool. so. I thought it was funny, too. I like the trash talking. I think, I mean, the fact that I'm pretty sure there's more viewers for that game than the men's national championship. So I, I love everything that's going on for women's basketball right now and all that. However, for starters, Kaylin Clark did not do that to the L- in the LSU game. She did it in the South Carolina game. Uh, Angel yeah. Reese is coming and out they saying... To, they seem to, like, take it personally that she... She did, did it in the, the Louisville... She, she did it in the Louisville yeah, game, too. It wasn't even South but, Carolina. No, but, like, they were talking about how she was, like, how this, they, she, like, waved off the South Carolina player and was, like... Yeah. Too, and they were, like, we took... The, like, they were, like, really... I thought that was a bit... That was a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I thought that was a bit of a stretch as well. I mean, it's called a scouting report because she still didn't shoot it. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, the defensive plan was to not guard the three and let them shoot. I mean, that's teams do that, you know? And they did that for South Carolina. It was no disrespect towards LSU. They weren't worried about LSU. They were playing South Carolina. And LSU's like, oh, we don't take Colony to disrespect. And, you know, they just, like, start talking all this trash and stuff. And then that thing, so number two, the handshake to the face. She was really following her around the court doing that for 30 seconds. And, you see, with me, during games, I talk trash during the game when it's close. Grant when it's going th- back and forth. Grant would start throwing hands with their duty. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> when the game's over and we see yeah. and I see that I've already won, who yeah, cares? Like, I why mean, would I, yeah, why would biggest, I go and trash talk? The biggest talk? trash talk to winning is that you won. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you already won. And I get by speak. that. And what, and what is weird about it is you literally just won the national championship. Exactly. Like, you won the highest accolade you can possibly have won mm-hmm. in your career. My first instinct would be going and celebrating with my teammates and, yeah. like, going and hugging my coach and, you know. So that was weird. I get the competitiveness. I, whenever, whenever I played, I'm super I competitive, yeah. hyper competitive. Yeah. I also was always more of a let my game do the talking. Yeah, let me yeah. game do the talking. But, again, they were both going at it. They're both two of the best players in college yeah. basketball. I can get the emotions. I think it was over. I think it was overblown. Um, I think um, Dave Portnoy calling her a classless POS is insanely uncalled for. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you can like it, you can not. I mean, again, I'm not a big but, fan of following it, someone around the court, like after you just won the national championship. But if I saw if I saw a like a men's college basketball player, I wouldn't like. I'd be like, oh, okay, that's yeah. kind of weird. But and I just right. I, I don't get the trash talking to her like you said after you just won the biggest accolade in the sport, and you're still talking about her in the press conference after the game. Like, why not talk about yeah, your team? That, that's a why weird not talking about like everything y'all accomplished and everything y'all went through? You know? Yeah, that's weird. How that's a little rant free. I honestly, it's not that like I'm. I mean, I have no strong emotions towards it. I just feel like. As a teammate, I think I'd be a little like, all right, we just won the national championship. Can we talk, quit talking about this yeah. chick who plays for the team we just beat? Yeah. I think that's where my mind would be. I, I, I think that yeah. – I think Major Reese well, will step back and realize, like, hey, maybe you know I should have spent this time – to just celebrate with my teammates instead. Enjoy of, the moment. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I think she's enjoying enjoying oh, no, all no, of the, oh, yeah, based yeah, off her yeah, Twitter yeah. feed. So she, much attention. She's yeah, enjoying no, all the attention real. she's getting. So but, uh, yeah. well, again, she only had ten points in that game. But she's an awesome player. She, she had, is good. She had like over thirty four what triple doubles this season. So, I don't know. She uh, averaged around like, like twenty two. She, she was a good player. She didn't do a lot that game. It was some other girl. It was Alexis uh, Morris who yeah, from rest in peace from Beaumont, Texas. Former Texan M. Aggie. Yeah. And Sadly, let that Beaumont. one slip. Really? Yeah. Shout out Beaumont. Shout out Beaumont. We just yeah, hey, shout out all our listeners from Beaumont. Yeah, dude, to be fair, these are half our listeners. <laughs> it's just people I know. Hey, shout out Beaumont. Shout out, Let's yeah. Let's go. Uh, one thing, Joe Biden invited both teams 
It was Jill no, Biden. No, Jill Biden. Jill wanted, Biden? She, wanted she wants both, both teams. And then Joe said, no, we're just getting the two winners from UConn and LSU. Yeah. And Joe wanted both. Joe wanted both. Which even yeah. Caitlin well, Clark. Well, even still, even I don't Caitlin even... Clark was like, no. She's like, we didn't win the national championship. I don't want to go as like a consolation prize. Right. Yeah. Which is like respect. That just would, if both teams would have showed up at the White House. Weird. That would be that would super awkward. awkward. Could you yeah. imagine Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark throwing down in the, in the, White in the Oval Office? To, just like, to be yeah. a reporter. Yeah, no, that whole situation was weird. I don't know why they would even think or even talk about it. Angel Reese said, <laughs> I think she said she would just... She would go if, like, it was Obama? No, they, well, said, Alexis Morris had tweeted out, like, like, uh, like Michelle Obama, can we come celebrate it at your house instead? I don't even know if they're going to the White House. Because yeah, I, I don't think Angel, Angel Reese said she wants to go at all. Wow. So they might she, would she rather go celebrate at Michelle Obama's house? Hey, Which, what, I mean, if I got the option to celebrate a national championship at Michelle Obama's house, I dude, would. I would, I, would go, I would go visit Joe Biden. I would dude, just, Obama? Dude, that, that guy probably throws the craziest house parties dude yeah obama is obama's dude. we're not even going in there he's a party animal dude he's a he's <laughs> a beast dude i would yeah. love to party with obama <laughs> well we can party this weekend after a you know goes to the plains auburn going hopefully. to the plains hopefully which i mean is a pretty favorable road draw to be honest with you i mean when you look at the sec every year this is a pretty favorable ro- road draw and I mean, it's the same old, same old. Someone's got to step up pitching. We've got, we can't same be giving old, up seven runs every game, and, and especially with how the bats are this year. Hopefully, the bats can heat up like they did last year. Um, I mean, we're gonna need someone more than Haas and Moss to 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 rise up and yeah, actually hit the baseball. Yeah, um, I mean, oh my God, did y'all see this tweet on Sunday? Which one? Uh, his tweet says. Jay Slavalet has all the girls screaming in section two hundred three. Did you see that? That was a little weird. That, that, that <laughs> caught me off guard. Uh, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll censor the name, uh, but yeah, some individual tweeted out that all the girls were aroused by Jay Slavalet during the game on Sunday. Caught me off guard. Which, that was weird. I'm How would you know hold that? All comments uh, towards that for my <laughs> own public, for my own PR. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, I don't know. That was weird. I mean, but, but Jace Lavalet has looked like he has looked better. I mean, he's looked better. I think Tab Tracy has looked, you know, coming in and relief on like reserves from the bench. Um, Minnick has added. I think Minnick's added a lot of stability in that lineup. Mm-hmm. Like he's come in, is now like stabilized himself, is hitting about three hundred. You know, which is for someone yeah. who's coming off has played one game and is a meet like, hey, here's conference play for you. Um, yeah, that's that's great. Even Werner's at two and six. I mean, we're just going to have to have some unexpected bats step up and perform. I mean, that's just kind of got to be the theme. There's so much inconsistency, it's hard to pinpoint where the consistency has to come yeah. from. I think we have to win Thursday. So, yeah. Because we can't, we will not win the series if we don't win game one. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so, that's, that's a fact. So, we, hey, they just got to hit the ball well and pitch good. I think they will hit the ball. That's, that's, that's my dad baseball <laughs> fact. We I think they will two hit. Two games to win the series. I think they will hit well. I think, I think this is the week the hitting could carry the pitching if the pitching doesn't step up. I mean, that was last Beca- week too. Trust well, me. yeah, pro- I mean, yeah. And if we, if, maybe I'm, not in that Sunday and game. I'm okay, and I'm okay with that. Truthfully, if it's like last year, because that's how they won last year, is they would just like someone would just randomly come in, hold the fort down a little bit, and then. And then the bats would just outscore you. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at Auburn's. Uh, Pitching right now, it's not, they, in their in their game in their they're in their last two Sunday games, they've given up a combined forty one runs. They gave up twenty four two weeks two weekends ago against Georgia, and then last week they gave up seventeen in That's in their nuts. two Sunday games. They also gave up twelve in the Saturday game against Florida so if last you win week. Game one, and then you know that gives you that leaves the door open for you to to it could it could be the end of a end of a streak. You know, you lose game one, you could win game two and three. That would be something. I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, and me. I wouldn't bet on it. It's, a, it, it's baseball. Baseball is weird. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's we got Auburn, A&M and Auburn playing this weekend for baseball. We got the Masters with Sam Bennett. 
Uh, basketball is officially over now. It's time to move on. Slow to your portal combat season. It's okay. But so it's time to move on. Enjoy the baseball season. Take it all in before football comes around. Hey, Aggies, make sure to go to RideHitch.com. It's like Uber, but also for longer distances. Enjoy 30% off your first four rides using code AggieNews4. Remember, that's A-G-G-I-E News4. Make sure to go to RideHitch.com, use the code, and enjoy 30% off your first four rides.